Hello everyone, today we're going to look at quadratics in regards to supply, demand, and equilibrium. So everything that we learned about supply and demand before is true here, except instead of lines, we're going to have quadratics. So find the equilibrium of the following situation. The supply is p equals x squared plus 2, and the demand is p equals x minus 3 squared, where x is in millions. So before we had q for quantity, um, but the book changes back to x, so we're going to have x for the quantity and p for the price. Now typically we're going to have these same type of situations. Our supply is going to be x squared plus a number, and our demand is going to be x minus a number squared. For supply, I can think of that as either the standard form of a quadratic or the vertex form. You can really do either way. For the demand, you want to see that as vertex form. So if we want to make things easier, we can think of them both as being in vertex form. So for the equilibrium, remember that that is when our supply equals demand, so we set them equal to each other. Now in order to solve this, remember we need everything on one side, so we need zero on one side, everything else on the other, but we also need to foil out our quadratic here. And remember that foiling means I'm going to take my x minus 3 and multiply it by x minus 3. So my f gives me x squared, my o gives me negative 3x, my i gives me another negative 3x, and my l gives me a plus 9. I have a lot of people who will write x minus 3 squared is either x minus 9 or x plus 9. But remember, you have these two middle terms, and they don't cancel. So please make sure that you're foiling this out correctly. It's x squared minus 6x plus 9. That is the biggest mistake that I see people do in this section, is they don't square x minus 3 correctly. Okay. Now, the really nice thing about this is that my x squareds are going to cancel. So I have 2 equals negative 6x plus 9, and I'm back to a linear equation here, and I don't have to worry about things like the quad, uh, quadratic formula. So it's just a regular old line. I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides, divide by negative 6. The negatives cancel. X should always be positive, right? It's the quantity of something. So if you're getting a negative, that means something happened. And we're getting 7 sixths. Now remember, x is in millions, so that's 1.16666666 million. So 1,166,666.66666. Okay, so you don't want to round 7 over 6 to an integer because I don't need to have an integer number of millions. And then the last thing I want to do, because it is an equilibrium uh, point, is I also need the price. So I'm going to plug 7 sixths into either the supply or the demand. Remember, I should be getting the same answer either way. And then the price is a dollar amount. So the price, I do have to round to two decimals. So if I plug 7 sixths in, I should be getting to two decimals, 3.36. And again, I want you to actually do it out to double check. So graph the following, clearly label the equilibrium point, and again we're going to assume that x is in millions. So we have supply, p equals x squared plus 1, demand, p equals x minus 2 squared. So we'll start by finding the equilibrium point by setting our two equations equal to each other. So x squared plus 1 equals x minus 2 squared, and then we need to FOIL out x minus 2 and you'll be getting x squared minus 4x plus 4. Again, please double check that. Make sure you're getting the same thing. Again, the x squareds cancel. It's going to be a line. I'm going to subtract my 4 over to this side, and then I have negative 3 equals negative 4x, so x is 0.75. So here, um, I'm writing 0.75 instead of 3 fourths because I will be graphing it. Um, but 0.75 is exactly 3 fourths, right? So I'm not rounding here. It's exact. Then I'm going to plug it in to, again, either the supply or the demand to get the price. And you should be getting $1.56.
So I've got my equilibrium point, and then I also need as much information from the quadratics as I can. So that's the x and y intercepts and the vertex. So just like with um, supply and demand before, I'm only concerning myself with quadrant one. I don't have uh, negative prices, I don't have negative quantities, right? So all I care about is quadrant one in this case. So for the supply, we have the vertex is at zero, one. Remember I said we can consider these both to be vertex form. This guy is x really minus x minus 0 squared plus 1. So the vertex is 0, 1. There are no x-intercepts for this guy because remember the x-intercept is when y or p is 0. And if I had 0 equals x squared plus 1, subtract the 1 over, that's never ever true. I can't square a number and get negative 1. So there are no x-intercepts for the supply. And that's generally going to be the case. Again, if I have x squared plus a number, it's never going to cross the x-axis because I can't square a number, add a positive number to it, and get 0. Okay? And then the vertex is also the y-intercept. So I've got my, my there are no x-intercepts. I've got my y-intercept. I've got my vertex. And I've got my equilibrium, and that will be enough to draw our quadratic, and you'll see why in a minute. So we move over to demand. Again, demand is also in uh, vertex form. I can always add a zero to it. So my vertex is 2 comma 0. Notice that is an x-intercept, and remember uh, back before when we talked about quadratics, if the vertex is an x-intercept, it's the only x-intercept. Okay, I can't have two x-intercepts where one of them is my vertex due to symmetry. So since my vertex is the x-intercept, it's my only x-intercept. And then the other thing that I can do is find the y-intercept, which is when x is 0. And if x is 0, then I've got negative 2 squared, which is 4. And again, our supplies and demands are always going to look very similar. So for this supply, x squared plus a number, our vertex is 0, comma, whatever that number is that we're adding it. There are no x-intercepts, and the y-intercept is the vertex. For the demand, the vertex is the x-intercept, and then we also need the y-intercept. So now in order to graph it, we need to come up with our x and y values on the axes. So for the x's, we have, going down our list, 0.75, 0 to 0. So I'm going to go by halves. So 2, 1 is here. And then for the y's, we have, again going down the list, 1.56, 1, 0, 4. So I need to make sure that I go up to at least four, so I'm just going to go by ones. And then I'll mark some of them. Yeah, I'll mark them all. So then when it comes to making our points, we have, I'll start with the, um, in the intercept. So I have zero, one. I have zero, four. Whoops. Yeah. Close enough. And then two, zero. So those are my x and y intercepts. And then I have the equilibrium, 0 0.75, 1.56, right around there. And then I have to draw my graphs. So if I notice both of my quadratics are upwards facing parabolas, so they're both in general gonna look like this, but I don't care about anything outside of what I have labeled here. Anything above the, the y-intercept for my demand is too high to really care about. And anything past the vertex of my demand doesn't really matter. In fact, you'll typically see um, in the book something like this. So I'm only concerned with 0 to 2, which is, again, the vertex of my demand. So for the supply function, I have my vertex at 0, 1 and it goes through my equilibrium. So 
So that's going to give me something like this. And my supply is in red. My demand, the vertex, is 2, 0. And it goes through the equilibrium and the y-intercept. So what I'm really drawing is this part of the demand and then this part of the supply. So it's half, basically half or all, maybe more of like a quarter of each parabola. And it's different parts. So make sure that you're really drawing a parabola, right? Uh, I know you only have two points for the supply. Don't make it look like a line. In fact, you can always find out more values if you want. I could always plug in, say, one and a half into my supply or plug in two into my supply. If I plugged in two, so that's a really nice number, into here, I'd end up with five. So I could have my point, it's kind of off of my graph a little bit, but I could guesstimate right around there. You can always add more points to it, is what I'm saying. Okay, but don't forget they are parabolas. Um, so keep that in mind when you're drawing them. And let's try another one. Supply equals x squared plus 3. Demand is x minus 3 squared. So again, first we'll start with the equilibrium. x squared plus 3 equals x minus 3 squared. Square out x minus 3 squared. We did that earlier. It's still x squared minus 6x plus 9. Again, the x squareds cancel. I'll bring the 9 over. So negative 6 equals negative 6x. X is 1. Plug 1 into either the supply or the demand. And we should be getting out a really nice 4. Okay. So our equilibrium is 1, 4. And then we'll start with the supply. Just like before, think of it as vertex form and the vertex is 0, 3. That's also the y-intercept. And again, there are no x-intercepts. This guy will never be 0. As for the demand, again, it's in vertex form. The vertex is 3, 0, which is also the x-intercept, which means it's the only x-intercept. And the only other point we can find right away is the y-intercept, so when x is 0, we get 9. So when we go to graph, again, we want to take into consideration our x values, which are 1, 0, and 3. So I'm just going to go by 1s. And then our y values, 4, 3, 0, 9. So I'm going to go by 2s. And they're close enough. There we go. So to plug in our points, we have uh, 0, 3, 0, 9, and 3, 0. Those are our intercepts. And then our equilibrium point, 1, 4. And then, again, uh, our supply is an up upwards opening parabola. Vertex is at 0, 3. So it looks something like this. I could, like I said before, plug in another point if I want everything after one to be more of what it should be. So if I plugged in, uh, say, 2, I would have 2 squared plus 3 is 7. So I would have the following point, 2, 7. That looks pretty good. So that's pretty good. And then... I'm going to my demand, it's going to look something like that. Okay. So again, just make sure they do look like parabolas and not uh, straight lines. And let's try one more. So the supply is p equals x squared plus 4, and the demand is p equals x minus 4 squared. So again, we're going to set them equal to each other to find the equilibrium point square out x minus 4 squared and you should be getting x squared minus 8x plus 16 and then again we have that our x squareds cancel I'll move the 16 over and we're left with negative 12 equals negative 8x divide both sides by negative 8 
and x equals 1.5. Okay. And then I plug that in to again one of my two equations or both and I should be getting $6.25. So again, hopefully you go and actually do it and make sure you're getting 6.25. So the equilibrium point is 1.5 comma 6.25. For the supply, we have our vertex is again our y-intercept, which is 0 comma 4. The demand, the vertex is 4 comma 0. And the intercept, the y-intercept, is 0, 16. So if I plug in 0, I'll have negative 4 squared, and that's going to give me 16. Okay? Um, so then we, again, want to start graphing them. So if we look at our x values, we have 1.5, 0, 4, 0. So I'm just going to go by 1s. 3, 2, 1, 4. And then our y values go from 0 to 16. So I'm going to do my best here. I'm going to go by 4s. So this is 12, 16, 8, that's 8, whoops, and then 4. And then to do our points, we have the uh, y intercepts at 0, 4. Oops. Let's try that again. 0, 4 and 0, 16. And our y intercept at 4, or sorry, our x intercept at 4, 0. So we've got our intercepts and then our equilibrium point 1.5, 6.25. So we're going to guesstimate where 6.25 is, roughly right around there. And then again, our supply function is the parabola with a vertex at 0, 4. And I'm going to plug in another point to try to make sure that our parabola looks really nice. So I'm going to plug in 3. If I plug in 3 into my supply, I have 3 squared plus 4, which is 9 plus 4, which is 13. That's going to be right around there. And then using those points, I'm going to connect them to make a nice parabola. And there's my supply. And I'll change to blue for my demand. And again, the vertex is at our x-intercept. If I connect the points, it's going to look something like that. Okay, so make sure you read through the book and try out the homework. And let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.